Coming up on The Good Life, learn how you can be a part of the solution to end child trafficking. Diana Simone, president of Born to Fly International, will explain the purpose of her organization and how you can help. That's coming up on The Good Life. Welcome to The Good Life viewers. We're so glad that you chose to join us today. I'm Barbara Beck and this is a program that is going to probably enlighten you about an issue that is really, really difficult to talk about and one that truthfully we'd rather not talk about. We would rather this problem of child trafficking go away and not be a part of our existence. But it is true and it is very real and it is happening right here in Central Florida. So as difficult as this is to talk about, I hope that you'll stay with us and be a part of this program because you very well could be a part of our solution. I wanted to read a verse that I found just this morning that I thought was so good for us to focus on and think about. This comes from Psalm 23, which says, I'm sorry, Psalm 40, which says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. You know what that says to me? There is hope. God recognizes the slime and the mud and the mire that is part of our society, part of the sinful world that we have, but He is able. He gives us hope and He gives us a way to get out of that slippery mire and the slimy mire of just despair and put us in a place where we can do something and make a difference. So on today's program, we're gonna be talking about this very important but trust troubling topic of human trafficking. We want to caution all of you that this program may not be suitable for young children. You might want to ask some children if they're in the room today to kind of go away and do something else, maybe read a book in their room, because my special guest today is somebody wonderful who is dedicated to helping in this area. Her name is Diana Simone, and she is president of Born to Fly International, an organization that educates at-risk children and their parents about the dangers of child trafficking. Welcome, Thank Diana you, Simone. Thank you so much for being here today. Do you recognize what a difficult topic this is for us to talk about. I do, absolutely, and I thank you for wanting to talk about it. I know the stories are not, not easy to hear. They're not. They're not easy to hear, and it's not a nice part of our society. We would rather this go away. Because it's so prevalent, though, we have to address it. I, I keep thinking about the scripture that says, those to whom much is given, much is expected. You know, Diana, we've been given a lot of knowledge, and we impart a lot of educational knowledge to our viewers out there today in the hopes that they'll grab hold of some of these truths and make a difference. So that's our goal today, Great. to educate Great. and then to make a positive impact. Tell us your definition, first of all, Diana, of child trafficking. What is it? It's children who are being bought and sold like animals. And it can be either for sex, for labor, slavery, or even for organs, mm. for their organs. Can you share some statistics that would shed some light into us because you know 10 years ago before we started hearing a lot about this we thought this just happened in Asia and parts of Europe but we're starting to read more and more that this is a, a domestic problem. When I started Born to Fly 10 years ago I thought it was just over there mm -hmm. also and then I started finding out it's it's right here too it's right here in Central Florida so the statistics are, are approximately one million children a year who are added to the number who are already enslaved. Mm -hmm. Human trafficking in general is about 21 million around the world. Mm -hmm. So about a million children a year are lured into this. In the United States, the, the, it's very difficult, to, of course, to pinpoint the exact numbers, but in the United States, there are about 100,000 children a year who are at risk for it. What, are you, what would you define as a child that might be a victim of human trafficking? What are the ages? It can, even down to infants, four-year-olds, oh. five-year-olds, and these are children 
uh, uh, talking about sex trafficking who are sold 20, 30 times a night, mm. a four-year-old, a five-year-old. And then maybe we don't find out about it. I think I've read where oftentimes they'll die of AIDS before they're even identified as a victim. Yes, the, the life expectancy of a child who is going through that kind of trauma is not, not very long. So that's why our goal is to actually keep the traffickers from, from even reaching the children. We can do rescues, which Born to Fly does not do rescues, but there are organizations that do rescues, but it's very, very difficult mm -hmm. to rescue a child. And many of them, believe it or not, don't want to be rescued. Their minds are so mm. warped. messed up, mm -hmm. so warped, so brainwashed, mm. so traumatized that they, they resist being rescued. Mm -hmm. And it, then even when they are rescued, they will actually run back to the traffickers because mm. they've been so programmed. I mean, we, we can't even imagine what they go through, so their minds yeah. have to shut down reality and just say, okay, this is normal, this is reality, yeah. that's the way they, they deal with it. Mm. Diana, take us back 10 years ago, mm -hmm. where you're a journalist and you have been assigned to go, I guess, overseas to India, to mm -hmm. India and identify maybe and do a story on child trafficking. Tell us your story, how you really got involved. Well, the story was actually on forced prostitution of women. I hadn't really heard, I had heard about child trafficking. Mm -hmm. I had been to Thailand before this and it was something I had heard in the back of my mind, but I thought it was a child here, a yeah. child there. So I was in India and my contact was taking me through the red light district on a Saturday evening, early in the evening, about seven o'clock, mm -hmm. and it was already getting geared up. Mm -hmm. And we were in his van and he said, do you see the um, cages in that second story window? He pointed to a window and I said, cages? What's in them? Not really wanting to know. And he said, five-year-old girls. <sighs> and they're smuggled across the border from Nepal and they're held in these cages mm. for 30 days and they're tortured, they're raped, they're starved, everything until they no longer have a will to rebel. Mm. And then they, the traffickers know they won't run away. Mm. So, and he said you could, you could take a picture but don't let the pimp see you because they'll break the window of the van and, and steal your camera. So I got my photo and it's a little bit shaky and you, you can't see the children. I could only see the, the bars on the cages. Now you're down on the street level and yes. you're looking up to a two-story building and you can actually see the cages in yes. the windows. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So I call it the photo that changed my life yes. because I came home and I couldn't stop thinking about what I had seen and the mm. stories he had told me. And later on, while I was there, I interviewed some young women. Th this was with Teen Challenge in, in Bombay, Mumbai. And they do a fantastic job. They actually have Bible studies in the brothels. They, they told me, we found out that the best way is not to, not to go after the girls, we go after the brothel owners. And we get them all saved and yeah. <laughs> cleaned up and realizing what they're doing and they lead the girls out. Yeah. And we went to a church service at a church that they had started in the red light district. And there was a, a young woman who was sharing her testimony. And of course it was all in Hindi. So I didn't know what was happening, but I could just tell the glow on her face that something had happened mm. to this woman. And I, I asked the translator who was with me, and she said she was the, the brothel owner. Mm. And she received the Lord as her savior and realized what she was doing and led all the girls out. And now they were, they were all there mm. loving Jesus. Praise God. Yeah. So born to fly happened as a result of your going to India. What exactly does Born to Fly then do in addition to what you're talking about? Well, we, we do, we focus specifically on prevention. The, the okay. three, the four areas of working to stop human trafficking in general are prosecution, which is going after the traffickers and getting them arrested and the buyers, uh, protection, which is doing the rescues and all the aftercare. We can imagine the, the mm. healing that these, mm -hmm. these children need. And then prevention, which is what we do. Mm -hmm. And there's also partnership, which is everybody working together. I've added two more Ps myself. Passion, because we have to be yes. passionate about this in order to end it. And prayer, because nothing yes. is going to, to happen right. without right. prayer. So we work in the area of prevention. Our goal is to reach the kids before the traffickers do. 
and we do this with a curriculum that we spent five years developing and testing in five countries and going along with the curriculum is a wordless book so that kids anywhere in the world can read it and the the wordless book is a story it tells the story of a caterpillar who has a dream to fly and in her quest to follow her dream she learns the hard way important lessons like choices have consequences it's important to know who your true friends are you are valuable you are born to fly don't settle for less is our goal is not just to keep them from being trafficked, but to set them free to be who God created them to be. And that, that's why our name is Born to Fly. It's not, you know, we want to stop child trafficking, but we want to yes. get finished with child trafficking and, and go on to, to set these kids free to soar. So really, Diana, the curriculum, if a child goes through that, they don't necessarily have to know that they're going to not be a, a victim or, or of child trafficking. They just might be finding their true identity in Christ, which is going to prevent substance abuse, prostitution down the road, suicide, all kinds of things mm -hmm. that could happen as a result of not really grabbing hold of who they are in Christ. Is that the main goal? Exactly, exactly. The, the curriculum has two tracks. For the younger children, we don't even mention trafficking. It's just those, those values and those, those character traits that everybody yes. needs to know. And right. then the track for the teenagers, of course, is much more direct and in your face. And the curriculum, by the way, is secular so that we can get well, into that's what every I was country. Ask. Yes, you can get into this uh, public school system as a result yes, of that. Yes, exactly. And then okay. we have a whole Christian additional material that Great. goes along with the six sessions that we teach in the secular. And you are thinking and knowing, because you know what's going on out there, that every child should actually go through a curriculum like Born to Fly or something that is going to, to help them in this regard. Every child. Yes, because every child is at risk for this. Yes. It's not one of the other things, that, myths that we have, is not, it, that it's not just over there, but it's not just those children in those schools. It's every child in, in every school and every socioeconomic mm -hmm. strata is, is um, at risk for trafficking. We had here in Central Florida just a few months ago a, a um, arrest of 52 men who mm. were buying children. Mm. And, and they were in all walks of life and uh, in all areas of, of Central Florida. And these are Diana Americans, or are they foreigners? Or who are these 52 men? The buyers? Yeah. They were, I'm, there may have been some foreigners, but they were primarily American. There, there were youth pastors, there wow. were uh, leaders, there were coaches. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, this is blowing me away. We're going to talk about a lot of details, who these children are, how, what we can do. There are a lot of details that we need to continue to talk about. But first, viewers, we're going to take a short break. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll have more with Diana Simone next. Stay with us. Welcome back, viewers, to The Good Life. If you're just joining us, my special guest today is Diana Simone, president of Born to Fly International. This is an organization dedicated to educating at-risk children and their families about child trafficking, but Diana, also about just giving children an identity into who they are and equipping them with tools so that they're not victims in other areas as well, wouldn't you say? Yes, exactly. The, the six sessions that we teach Three of them were right out of the mouth of one of the safe house directors mm -hmm. that I interviewed in Thailand. I have been to Thailand three times and two of the trips were specifically to work on the Born to Fly curriculum. And I asked one of the safe house directors who had little kids all around her, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, who had been rescued. Mm. And uh, I asked her, what would you teach these girls? And she said, well, if we could teach them choices have consequences, that they need to know who their true friends are because yes. the traffickers come yes. in disguised as friends. We need to teach them that they're valuable 
and we need to teach them to go after their dreams, but to do it in a safe yes. manner. Mm -hmm. So that's those are my friends writing those all mm -hmm. down, and that became part of the curriculum. Part of the curriculum. So are there? You mentioned the the age of five, five year olds up to what would be an appropriate age to have this curriculum taught to them? The two tracks are the, the younger track. It, we really leave it up to the teacher and also the culture because in some places they might be able to teach a little bit more about mm -hmm. trafficking like in Thailand. They're very direct with the mm -hmm. five year olds and six year olds. Here we would not do that mm -hmm. at all. So we just leave it up to the teacher and we have all of that written in the curriculum. You could teach this if you want. You could teach this if you prefer not to talk about that subject. Mm -hmm. So it's really, we, we try to give the teachers as much flexibility as they need. What about, Diana, having parents have access to the curriculum? Because I'm imagining myself as a grandparent and my daughter as a parent maybe going over some of these principles and teaching tools with, with our children and grandchildren. A lot of homeschoolers have downloaded the, the curriculum, which is all free, by the way, and it's all on oh, our website. Great. That's great. So a lot of homeschooling moms have um, uh, registered to, to teach it. Talk to us for a couple of minutes about, because I, I can't imagine my talking to my four-year-old granddaughter and my six-year-old grandson without putting the fear of, not the fear of God, because they, hopefully they already have that, but the fear of just death and having nightmares and horrible dreams about this. It, it, there's a fine line, and I, don't, I would not know how to walk that line, Diana, about scaring them to death versus giving them a healthy reverence and fear for what's out there. How do you distinguish that? Exactly, and we encountered that in our test phase. We tested it in five countries, and one of the countries was at one of the safe houses, or one of the places was one of the safe houses in Thailand that I had visited. And mm -hmm. the director emailed me, because we were all in contact during the test phase, and she said, our kids are getting really afraid. And these are kids who already knew about trafficking. Yeah. And that could be also why they were afraid, because they knew that kids in their town were, they, they knew about the black van that was driving around right. their neighborhood. Well, they probably had kids. missing friends too. Yes, you know. yes. I mean, it's very real. So we, I emailed everybody and said, okay, how have you encountered this? How have you dealt with it? Mm -hmm. And none of the other groups had encountered it, but mm -hmm. I talked to a, a woman in uh, Tampa who does a lot of uh, trauma counseling with um, young women who have been rescued from trafficking. And she walked me through the whole way to do this, to, to counter it with scriptures, Good. find out what, they're, what mm -hmm. they're afraid of. All right, let's look at what God's word says about this. Mm -hmm. Of course, then we had to put that into the secular mm -hmm. curriculum. Right. It was a little trickier to, yes. to deal with that without bringing, bringing the Lord in, but we But the we truths did. are universal. Whether yes. you say it comes out of Isaiah or whether you just make it a truth that's out there, it is yes. the same. Yes. Diana, we keep talking about India and Thailand and you know parts of Asia, and we really want to drive home today to our viewers. That it happens here. This is happening right here in Central Florida, in yes. Florida, in the United States. And you mentioned a statistic with me that we're the third largest city in terms of reporting child trafficking. Doesn't mean we're number three in the nation with child trafficking right. incidents. Right, Florida is third largest. Florida. Florida in general is third largest okay. in reporting. And that's because we have a lot of awareness going on here. We've got the Florida Coalition Against Human Trafficking, mm -hmm. which has united the whole state. Then in Orlando, we have Orlando Rescue and Restore, which is a fantastic coalition of nonprofits such as Born to Fly, mm -hmm. the schools, DCF. Uh, law enforcement from every level, from local, state, county, national, even international, attends our meetings. We have embassies and consulates who good, attend. Good. Uh, attorneys good. come, uh, school schools, good. and then of course the faith-based community comes yes. also. So there's a national hotline to report trafficking. Mm -hmm. So Florida has the third lot, a third highest rate of reporting. So a lot of times it sounds like officials or people like you who are dealing with this every single day have that awareness. What our job today to do is to raise awareness among the everyday person like myself, the grandmother, the mother who is out there today thinking, well, this could never happen to my child. You know, they're under the wings of my protection, under the wings of the church. But you're telling us, and I want you to address this a little, Diana, how traffickers target certain children in the malls, in middle schools, Mm -hmm. What are they looking for? 
We had somebody come and speak to us at Orlando Rescue and Restore, and we're, we're all in, in this field, and mm -hmm. our mouths were open listening to what he was telling us about mm -hmm. how they go into mm -hmm. the malls and the specific kids they look for. And, you know, we all went to the malls when we, when we were that age, too. So they'll look for girls, specifically, you know, a group of three girls. They won't target Miss Popularity and Miss Beautiful in that trio. They won't target the one who's the, the tagger on, but the one in the middle. Hmm. And they'll be looking right at her, and hmm. they won't look at the other two. Wow. And they won't immediately say, you know, come with me and, and work in, in my brothel. But it will be a, a, a luring and a grooming process of just getting to know her and let's mm. meet back here again and what's mm. your your Facebook page and on and on. Social media, as wonderful as it is, social media has been fantastic for, for uh, Born to Fly getting the word out there, but it's also very, very dangerous for children. Um, traffickers are constant. Facebook is so not safe. My mm. account was hacked. Mm. I'm banned from Facebook, but I could still get on you know, my friends' Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. That's how un, unsecure yeah. it is. Right. The traffickers know this. They will befriend people, young kids on Facebook, on Twitter. They're also in the middle schools. Who are the recruiters? How, how would a, a mm -hmm. trafficker get into a middle school? The recruiters are other mm -hmm. young kids who have already been lured into trafficking. They may still be living in their own homes. Mm. They are living in their own homes. And they, they're already so messed up, but they've got this whole two lives thing going on yeah. with their families. Wow. And then what's going on in school, what's going on in the evenings, what's going on yeah. in the afternoons. So those kids in turn become the recruiters for other wow. children. So, you know, a lot of times, Diana, I guess I would have thought it would be somebody that would just snatch somebody out of the mall. Or, and you're telling us, or what I'm hearing you say, is that it's more of a gradual process. It's organized. It's, it's methodical, it's something, mm -hmm. it's intentional, mm -hmm. and they are going after our kids. You know, there's been so much publicity about sexual predators just going after mm -hmm. girls on the internet. And I, and I never really took it, this extra step, which is child trafficking, which goes above and beyond even the sexual predator, which is after his own gratification, his or her own gratification. This is something that is a business, and I guess it's a multi-million yes. dollar business. Yes, earlier when you asked me for the definition, I should have added the two words, organized crime, mm. because it's organized, it's very, that, that same yeah. man who spoke to us showed us a, a um, organizational chart like you would see in a corporation wow. with the specific job descriptions, yeah. who reported to whom. And this is all over the world. Organ and so it's organized and it's crime. Yeah. The crime part of it, of course, is against the law everywhere. But it's so lucrative. It's the second highest grossing yeah. form of illegal industry on the planet after illegal drugs. Right. Used to be number three after illegal arms, and mm. it's now number two because it's so lucrative. And it's it's so low risk. You can, well, it's lucrative because you could sell, how, how many times can you sell a bag of drugs? Yes. Once, but right. you could sell a child over and over again. Mm. And it's very low risk. A, a man could be walking with a, a child on the street and you don't you know. Don't know. No. Could be an uncle, could be a friend, could mm -hmm. be whatever. Diana, we just need to leave our viewers with some hope. Yes. Uh, we need to be able to say, <laughs> Born to Fly is doing something positive in educating and preventing child trafficking, but it is just such a sad, a hugely disturbing topic. Give us a positive note here, if you can. Well, everywhere that awareness training has, has gone on, the rate of trafficking has gone down. There's just not enough of it, so, yeah. but that's what we're doing. So the the rate can go down, and in fact, the numbers overall, the new numbers have just been released, have gone down. So we are making making a dent of it, but the numbers went down from 27 million to 22 million. That's mm -hmm. still, still a lot, a lot of yes. people. That that's including adults. Mm -hmm. So we can actually make a difference by just simply by reaching the kids before the traffickers do. Mm -hmm. We had a, a, our first testimony came in from one of the test sites and we specifically talk about um, that the traffickers will come and offer you 
cell phones and running shoes and whatever. Mm. So these kids had who had gone through Born to Fly, traffickers came up to them and offered them cell phones and the kids yelled at them, no, we're more valuable than cell phones wow. and they, they ran off. Wow. Praise God. Diana Simone, thank you for the work that you're doing to prevent and to get child trafficking off of our radar. It is out there, viewers. It is big. It is huge. It is something that we need to be aware of. And then, in addition to that awareness, we need to be doing something positive about it. You need a takeaway from today. The takeaway is talk to your children. Tell them that they have their true identity in Jesus Christ. And if, if curriculum is a part of what you need, I want to give you some contact information for, from Diana is Born to Fly International Ministry. Her website is born to fly, the number two, fly.org. You can get more information from dianasimone.com. That website will give you, again, she mentioned the curriculum is free, viewers. Do you hear that? You can download that curriculum into your home and make that a part of maybe a ministry that you have right there with your children and grandchildren. Maybe it should be a neighborhood ministry. Whatever it is, if God is prompting you today to do something to prevent human child trafficking. Take some action, would you, today? There's a hotline that you can call, which is 1-800 or 1-888-3737-888. Now, that's a number where if you have a, 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 a sort of an inkling that something is happening, maybe in your neighborhood or with somebody that you know, please call that hotline. Don't call us here at the station and tell us. The hotline will put you directly in touch with someone who can make a difference. So again, we thank Diana Simone for being here with us today and for us having this very, very difficult conversation. Viewers, if you would like to get in touch with us here at the station for more information or prayer request, we would direct you to our address on the screen, which is 31 Skyline Drive in Lake Mary, Florida. Our telephone number is 407-215-6745. Email us. By the way, we have an email blast that we could send you every single week to let you know what we're doing here at Good Life 45 in terms of programming, in terms of what our financial and prayer needs are. We want to pray for you. We want you to be a part of our Good Life 45 family. That's how you can do it with that contact information that was up on the screen for you. Viewers, we have a closing scripture today to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. This comes from Proverbs 31 verses 8 and 9, which say, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Boy, do we have a mandate today to go forth from this place and be an advocate for those who are in need. We thank you for being a part of our Good Life 45 family today and hopefully every day. We pray that you have a wonderful day. And until next time, we hope to see you again right back here on The Good Life. Bye-bye and God bless.